to it. I assume you watched the game last night. What was just sort of your general sense before we obviously get into the quarterback play and that kind of stuff? Uh, general sense is why does Washington always have to be in one of these just dramatic finish type of football games? Um, you know, of course, everyone's going to point to the non-call, the pass interference at the end of the game, which was pass interference in case anyone was, was wondering. Yeah. Um, People think the NFL is rigged. Taylor Heineke's magic seemed to go away and come back at will last night. So let's just get into it, guys. It was a, it was a lot to unpack there. All right. So uh, what was the – well, this is the way I look at it. First of all, it came down to two critical plays. Obviously, the strip sack or um, well, strip fumble that uh, resulted in a touchdown. I, I don't blame – now, you're quarterback, so you tell me. I don't blame Taylor as much there. It was a two and a half. He was two and a half seconds from um, from getting to Heineke. So he was. It was two and a half seconds. I blame the left tackle Leno. I, you can only feel the pressure so much, and he was trying to get rid of the ball out to the right. Three second drop or three step drop. He he was on him so quick. The second fumble, obviously with Heineke, uh, that was critical because it was seventeen twelve. Uh, but first of all, the t- the first one. Who do you blame there? Yeah, I mean, that's 100% on Leno. Like, at the end of the day, Kayvon Thibodeau gets paid too, right? Mm -hmm. I think he had 12 tackles in the game. Uh, Obviously, he had that sack, uh, strip fumble for the touchdown. He played out of his mind. Uh, So I don't put that one on Taylor at all. But the rest of the game, Heineke was just really, really uh, flamboyant with the football, I would say. Even when he ran, almost ran the touchdown, got him down to the one-yard line, uh, when Thibodeau knocked him out uh, right before the goal line when he slipped. And he also should have just cut back behind Jahan Dotson to get a touchdown. Right. Um, he almost fumbled that one, right? And then, of course, he had the fumble in the red zone, uh, which was his second fumble that did count. Uh, he just was, to me, he was just too whimsical with the ball at times, uh, you know, just flailing it around and seemed a little uncomfortable there. Um, so, yeah, I would say the first one, 100% not, not on him. Obviously, you're the quarterback. You're holding the football, but – they got on him extremely fast, uh, and it's Kayvon Thibodeau who's really proven that he was worthy of that draft pick. Why, um, why? The rest of the game yeah, is more on him. He's a stud. But why are they going empty there? A lot of times, I mean, I don't know what the percentage is, but with, that just gets us in a bad spot. We're already up to, like, our fourth center or whatever it is. We're having problems with the offensive line all season. you got Thibodeau having that half of his life, and you go empty the backfield there when you know the D coordinator is going to bring pressure on second and eighteen. Yeah, I, I, a lot of that is coaching, too, I think, Robert. Yeah, I mean, you know, he asked me, was it on the was yeah. it on the quarterback? Uh, we talk about just schematically. Yeah, you shouldn't be in that. You know, that honestly, that's something that we saw from Turner when Carson Wentz was in games. 100%. And everyone, you know, talked about how he's not as mobile as he used to be, which is a fact. Um, Carson, I'm not saying Carson would have taken, taken that sack or wouldn't have got the ball out, but they're more – willing to go empty in adverse situations with Heineke because of his mobility. But when you have a guy like Kayvon Thibodeau, who's literally just pinning his ears back and, and getting ready to fire off the football, and as he said, prime time likes me, that's a prime time moment for him to make a play, and you gave him the opportunity to do it. So, yes, schematically I wouldn't have went empty there. Uh, you, not, you It's not that you play conservative in those situations, but you don't give a pass rusher a free pass at the quarterback by just going empty set and, and give him a one-on-one. So you don't like the pass there, or you just don't like the formation? Um, I don't like either the pass or the formation just because Washington has proven itself to be what type of team? A run-first team, not a pass-first team. Right. So when you're when you're backed up like that in a situation – that no coordinator is like, oh, yeah, sign me up for that. You probably shouldn't go to your biggest weakness uh, and then pass protection and go on empty set to try to get move the ball out of an adverse situation. Yeah, the, the thing is, is obviously, you know, when you start to lose and tie, you know, to a, to a team that, let's be honest, I mean, they're kind of on the same level as the commanders, right, both kind of like mediocre teams. Um, people obviously are going to wonder, are you going to give Carson another shot at this? How how would you handle this? I don't feel like Taylor played poorly enough, given everything, to just give up the job right away. But I think if he struggles next week in the second quarter or so, and they only got three points at halftime, I could see a change being made. <laughs> right. You know, uh, the, the Giants seem to have figured out whatever it is about the Taylor Heineke magic, but 
the one thing that Heineke's magic does for Washington is it makes them have to play at the top of their game in the biggest moments. Um, and and I've, I've been saying this for weeks, as you guys have, have had me on. It's not that Taylor's playing terrible. It's right. just it's always going to be a 24-21. You know, it's always going to be a, a 20-12 to when you got to go score a touchdown and get a two-point conversion just to tie the game. Mm-hmm. Um, for whatever reason, it, his play elevates the play of everyone else around him, but it doesn't allow you to go win games 35-17. Carson Wentz can do that, though. So I agree with you. I don't think it's like, hey, take Taylor out now. I think he'll get another week, maybe two, um, because the coaching staff loves him, the locker room loves him. But at some point, if they're going to go on a playoff push, they got to have a guy that can help them go blow teams out. Mm -hmm. And that's what Carson Wentz can do. He has the ability to do that. And maybe watching for the past couple weeks and getting fully healthy will help him go out there and put his best foot forward. But right now, they got to continue to try to win close games with Taylor Heineke. What's that like with an extended layoff? Now, it's different with Deshaun. Deshaun, I, God, I can't remember when last time he played, right? And so you see the rust there. But if you miss seven, eight weeks, Robert, and you come back, what what is that rust factor like? How quickly does do you get it back? Yeah, I think for, for Carson, there, there will be some rust. But what it comes down to is coaching once again, as we talked about on that play back up in your own territory you probably shouldn't go empty. Well, if Carson comes back, you got to continue to maintain the same identity that you've had the entire year while winning with Taylor Heineke. You have to go out there and run the football. Brian Robinson, they got to feed him, give him 20, 25 carries in the game. That's going to help the quarterback calm down Mm -hmm. and not feel like, oh, i got to throw the ball 35 times for us to win the game. I tweeted out in the game, I think that Curtis Samuel needs to get more, more touches. He needs the ball more. But I don't mean he needs the ball more in running situations. <laughs> you know, they gave him the, the rock, I think, five times in the game, and he had like one yard rushing, one or two yards rushing, because that's not really his game. He can do a Percy Harvin type of break a 60-yard run every now and then, but I just think he needs more targets in the passing game, and I think a guy like Carson Wentz will make that happen while also still keeping Scary Terry involved, because if Carson does come back, there's one guy that he knows he has to go to football to, and that's Terry McClellan.